Today in the news, we got some terrible scores, a project for your cores, and a scam for sure. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your Boot Sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with CES. It's been rumored for a long time that Nvidia would update their highest end GPU, the 3090. And uh, lately the leaks and rumors settled on the 3090 Ti. It would have slightly more CUDA cores. I believe it's 2.5% uh, more or 256 more CUDA cores. It would have faster memory at 21 gigabits per second and a much higher TDP at something like 450 watts. In any case, IT Home managed to get get a picture of a tough version of the GPU. And no, it's not just a tough 3090 where someone just, you know, added the TI logo next to the 3090. The color of the card is noticeably different and the fans have 11 blades on the TI model instead of nine on the regular 3090 box. So yeah, unaffordable card has been spotted. Also, with NVIDIA, in the last boot sequence, we talked about their three new GPUs, the RTX 2050, the MX 550, and the MX 570. Well, the RTX 2050 and the MX 550 have been tested on 3 d Mark's TimeSpy, giving us a taste of how they would perform in gaming. And, uh, well, it's pretty bad. The MX 550 scored around 2,500 points in the uh, TimeSpy test, and the RTX 2050 scored 3,300 369. Now, it's not too surprising since the MX550 is basically a cut down GTX 1650 with half the memory bus. Uh, 1650 usually scores around 3000 points, but it's still pretty disappointing for a new GPU to score that low. Hopefully, the price will reflect the performance. Same goes for the RTX 2050. It scores 3369 points. That's 30% slower than an RTX 3050. Hopefully these are somehow downclocked or just really bad production samples. If they're not, I wouldn't touch these laptops equipped with those GPUs unless they were like five to $600. Moving on, let's talk about the meat of this episode. Let me introduce you to this. This is an SSD for the Finer Things Club. It's for the people who really want to listen to the music, you know what I mean? With a regular SSD with TLC NAND, when you store your music on it and then play it back, it sounds like background music. There's no features and it's powerless. Everything is flattened. It lacks extension and density. As for QLC SSDs, I don't even want to talk about it to think of it. I might as well listen to some Nickelback. But how do you get better quality from an SSD? Well, you buy this. This is a one terabyte SSD for audiophiles. It has one terabyte of storage on it, but whoever is building this thing decided that 333 gigabytes is all you get. That's because it runs in pseudo SLC mode. Other SSD makers run in pseudo SLC partially because it increases endurance and performance, but apparently it also changes the sound of the music that you listen to. It goes from flat and extensionless apparently to, and I quote, in PSLC mode, there is a special natural feeling. It becomes more smooth and calm. The thickness is slightly increased and overall it is more resistant to hearing, but still slightly dry. What? The actual f So the controller is made by Realtek, which does a lot of audio for PCs. I don't think that they're involved in this project, but it's definitely a marketing ploy. In any case, this SSD also has a Crystek femtoclock oscillator, two capacitors, I think they're 220 microfarads, and it has a barrel connector. Why? Well, because the power input for the SSD is not through the NVMe slot, but rather through a freaking external source. We don't want that unclean power coming in through that filthy motherboard, right? But you know what? The, the data can go through it. The data can go through it, but not the power. Because logic. 
This is just insanity. Oh, and these guys aren't the only ones. A company called Synergistic Research also makes a $2,500 ethernet switch, which will elevate your streamed content. I gotta move on. On to a less frustrating subject, let's talk about One Us Moose's project Hydra. One Us Moose, or Yuri, has created a bunch of projects for the AMD community in the last couple of years, and they're all pretty amazing, and uh, most importantly, most of them are free. He created the uh, Ryzen DRAM calculator, which was super helpful in the early days of Ryzen, and the Clock Tuner for Ryzen, or CTR, not to be confused with Crash Team Racing. Anyways, CTR would allow you to both undervolt and overclock your Ryzen 3000 processors super easily, and it basically allows you to run your chip at peak efficiency. Now he released Project Hydra. Essentially, it's very similar to CTR, but it's for Zen 3 based CPUs or Ryzen 5000. And this thing gives you way more control. It gives you so much control that you can basically change AMD's entire boosting algorithm. There's two versions of the software, one which is free and the other which is paid, but does come with some extra control. So if you have a Ryzen 5000 CPU and you like to tinker with overclocking, you should check it out. It's on Igor's lab website. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. You know it right.